Hi, Brent Haynes with Wood Sound Flutes. Really going to be fun today because we're going to take a little tour around, uh, around the world, I guess. I don't know about around the world, but we're going to take a little tour anyways. Um, we're going to start in the water up at the Oregon coast and uh, maybe down to South America with this flute and because we've got the Oregon myrtle and we've got the wood from South America, which is purple heart. And we've got a little totem here of a dolphin. So we're in the water and from Oregon, the dolphin can swim from Oregon down to uh, down to South America. Just a traveling flute and just a lot of fun. This uh, beautiful little instrument. It's in the key of high uh, C and uh, just a gorgeous little flute. Really fun and simple, but uh, just beautiful little simple flute and fun to play. Beautiful, lively, fun little flute. The uh, Oregon Myrtle and uh, Purple Heart uh, Dolphin Flute. Very, very fun instrument. And I love it. Very, you know, you can have a lot of fun uh, with flutes. Do tons of little things to them. And make them all sorts of different things. From the Dolphin Flute to whatever, the Eagle Flute. The next flute is a Whale Flute. And, you know, it's... It's just a blast, and you know, it's kind of, the whale here is, I love him, he's so fun. You know, this particular flute really, uh, in my opinion, this flute needs also to have a simpler totem with it so that it can be a travel companion to the whale because you don't want to take a beautiful totem like this everywhere you go. Um, you know, if you want to take this flute out to the beach, for instance, you don't necessarily want to take the, the whale along with you um, because it might be just too fragile to go everywhere you want to go. Um, but it's just a lot of fun to take maybe to Flute Circle and show off there, you know, and play around the house and things like that. Um, beautiful times to play there, but not necessarily everywhere you want to go. So definitely would send this out with a, a spirit claw totem on it as well. So... Uh, gorgeous, gorgeous instrument. This is made out of our box elder barrel. It's color enhanced to get this incredible blue color. To me, this reminds me of when I was scuba diving a lot up in um, Washington, when we used to live up in Washington. I'd get into about 11 feet of water. It just always seemed to happen at 11 feet. I'm like, not 10 feet, Brent? No, it was like 11 feet. It always seemed to happen when I'd be there. And the light had come through the water and I'd be looking, looking down at the gravel and, and I, I, you know, I don't know what it is, but I, I was always looking around me as I was growing up and even now I'm still the same way, but I look around me, I, I listen and I, I see and, and, but I would be looking at the gravel and the light would just do this thing to the gravel. It, it would shimmer and glisten and, and what it was, was it's the light coming through the waves and, and you would see the pattern of the waves on the gravel below you as the light shimmered through the graves or through the gravel on the, um, as the light shimmered through the, through the waves, you'd see it go through the gravel and, and it was wild, just wild. And, and it reminds me of this pattern on the flute and, um, and I just love it. I, I love that, that patterns that it creates these different colors of and depths of colors of dark you know blues and greens and and the whites and the, and all these wild nuances of color that's what it reminds me of and so 
When I first started doing these, that's what I was thinking of as I started making these flutes, as I was thinking of that gravel in uh, when I was scuba diving. So anyways, I, I really love these instruments. This one is in the key of G. And uh, I really, you know, these, I, I don't make, I don't like making the box elder burl flutes in the in the low flutes so much um, you know below G down to um, you know into the low flutes I don't really love them so much you get into the bass flutes and the box elder burl actually all of a sudden does work but um, but in the low in the mid to, you know lower than F sharp say to um, to the low A and things, they really are not not fabulous. But down in the bass flutes, all of a sudden the box elder burl does start working. The mid G's, mid F sharps, and higher, it works fabulous. Um, this is just an amazing flute. Fabulously fun. <laughs> this is just so fun. I love it. You know, um, I guess I just love playing the flutes. Uh, I, I'm reading this fun book right now uh, that, that involves some music playing a uh, musician. And um, it's really uh, inspiring me as I'm uh, in my music making and, and instrument making and just loving, loving being involved in making music. It's so much fun. I love being a part of the music that you all make. It's a, it's a rare gift. It really is to be a part of the music that you all make. Uh, it's a rare thing and I, a privilege, really. Thank you so much. Um, anyways, gorgeous, gorgeous instrument. This next instrument is I'm really super excited about. I, uh, I purchased a board of Mung Ebony, and I had seen Mung Ebony a little bit before, but I'd never seen a board of Mung Ebony that looked like this. This board of Mung Ebony, look, it reminds me of um, some Cocobolo that I'd once seen. I called it Landscape Cocobolo. It, it just has these really wild um, swoops of lines of Cocobolo that come in, and, in crazy patterns. It reminds me of um, the wave down in northern Arizona, this uh, a sandstone formation down in northern Arizona. It reminds me of the pattern of the sandstone down there. And so this has these swooping grains um, that come down like this and then it abruptly ends into a, this line that comes right here. And it's very hard to see unless you're in bright light. I mean, I can see it in this light here but very hard you won't be able to see it. I'm sure this flute just looks black. You can see it on the, in the pictures, in the still pictures, so when you go on the website, take a look. And so to me, this is a perfect flute to mount the, uh, the uh, wolf to, um, or coyote, uh, depending on how you look at it. So, you know, the desert wolf or desert coyote, and 
uh, because it reminds me of uh, the the wave, you know, in the desert at night, and so you got the moon, you know, um, bouncing off of the water, um, you know, sparkling and things here represented in the uh, in the abalone here on the ends, and a little bit of the water in the turquoise, and so it's just this beautiful representation of of uh, of this flute and in the, in the uh, in the desert, a desert scene at night. So I really like it. I really like this flute. So I have a little bit of this Hmong ebony. I have about, oh, I don't know how much I have. Maybe I probably have another, maybe 13 flutes or something of Hmong ebony, depending on how many, you know, how big the flutes are. Maybe we have that much. And then, then it'll be gone. But, but it's really beautiful. And it's not too much, you know, they're not, outrageously priced by any means so um, it's it's pretty decently priced and gorgeous sounding too isn't that strong just boo doo da just super super strong see how clear that is listen to how that top note is I mean, I'm coming in with just a whisper of breath. So, very, very powerful flutes. Really clear, but very warm and very full. So, um, this is going to be a great wood while we have it. So, if you're looking for, you know, something special for a flute and, uh, you know, a dark color, that's a, you know, that's something really great. That's the first one we've made. So, um, you know, it's a, that's a great, great flute wood if you're looking for something nice. This next one we have, this is a rosewood. This is a Yucatan rosewood. And uh, it is just exactly what we expect out of a rosewood. Just spot on acoustics. It's gorgeous sounding. Uh, I love it. Oh, I forgot. So this is the, the night scene in the desert, right? This is our night scene. This is our daytime scene. <laughs> that kind of, so to continue our theme of the traveling, right? So we went from the ocean and now we're back into the desert and that kind of our traveling theme. Um, and so this is our daytime in the desert. We're down in the Utah desert now. And um, so this is Delicate Arch in southern Utah. And uh, so we're about four hours south of where I'm actually sitting right now. This is Delicate Arch. And just a, a gorgeous place. If you haven't been to Delicate Arch, highly recommend it to put it on your to-do list or your bucket list. Wonderful place to go and play the flute. Although, actually, Delicate Arch is really, really windy up there. But still, it's really cool to go play the flute there because it's such a mag magnificent place to be. And, uh, and then if you do go there, there's some really wonderful places to actually play the flute, like Hidden Arch in uh, the Fiery Furnace. Um, is a really fabulous place to actually go play your flute. The acoustics in Hidden Arch are unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. But uh, anyways, so this is uh, the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, I'm sorry, Yucatan, <laughs> Yucatan Rosewood.
But uh, just a lot of fun to play the native flute, isn't it? You know, so many fun things you can do. And, um, and that song just proved at the beginning there, you know, no wrong notes. Just keep playing. And um, what the heck. I hope you're having a wonderful day. If you have any questions at all, you can reach me at 801-822-1415. Again, I'm Brent Haynes. My email address is brent at woodsounds.com. Have a wonderful day.